this week after suggesting British football fans at the Qatar World Cup should be respectful of the host nation. This was in the wake of activist and campaigner Peter Tatchell having his pro-LGBT protest stopped by Qatari authorities. The latest development in the story is that the Prince of Wales will reportedly not attend the competition next month due to a busy schedule, although he has said he suggested he may consider, reconsider, attending if England actually make the final. So were Cleverly's comments insensitive or merely prudent? Advice and reassurance to ensure the safeties of British citizens who are, let's not forget, in a foreign land. Well, joining me to discuss this is the activist and campaigner Peter Tatchell himself and the commentator David Aldroyd Bolt. I thank you both for your company. Peter, I want to start with you. What actually happened in Qatar? What actually took place when you were out there demonstrating? Well, I was making a protest uh, primarily about the abuse of LGBT plus rights in Qatar, where gay people can be arrested, jailed, tortured, even subjected to horrendous, vile, uh, so-called conversion treatments to turn them straight. Conversion treatments that often cause mental breakdowns and, in one case I know, caused a young man to commit suicide, but also about the rights of women and uh, migrant workers. Uh, Qatar is in clear violation of international human rights standards. It has agreed to be a member of the United Nations, and that gives an obligation to sign up to and to implement the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which guarantees equal treatment and protection against discrimination to every citizen. It is not doing that. Okay, it is a but Peter, and a the... police state. The Qataris are saying the Qatari government have denied actually arresting you. How do you actually respond to that? They're saying totally fine. Well, look, that is what dictatorships do. When they are protested and exposed, they seek to discredit the protesters by claiming that the protest never took place or the person was never arrested, the person was never beaten up. That's nonsense. I was held for 49 minutes. I was not allowed to leave. I was threatened uh, that I could not leave and would face dire consequences if I attempted to leave. Um, it was only after 49 minutes that I was allowed to go on my way. That is, you can call it arrest or detention or whatever. I was held on the pavement there for all that time. Okay. But you know, it's not really about me. This is about the people of Qatar, whose human rights are being violated daily by a dictatorship. The idea that we should show respect, that football fans should show respect for a police state this dictatorship is absolutely profoundly shocking coming from a government minister. OK, so David, turning to you, I know you don't actually support Qatar's laws concerning gay people, neither do I. I think they're abhorrent. But I'm of the view that actually what James cleverly said there, which is, you know, you're in a foreign land, the laws of the land are different to ours, the values in that land are different to ours, so respect them. Respect is the wrong word. I think that was a mistake on the Foreign Secretary's part. What he should have said is that if you take the decision to travel to Qatar, uh, disagreeing with the laws that they have, which would be entirely reasonable given that they're, by any standards, uh, pretty abhorrent laws, you must be prepared for the fact that if you demonstrate against them, if you flout them, then you will be penalised for this, whether that's through being detained or being deported. Uh, I don't think there's any onus on anybody to have respect for things that are thoroughly um, lacking in any facet of what we could possibly respect. There is an onus on you when you go to a foreign country to abide by that country's laws, whether or not you agree with them. If you were to go to the United States at the age of 20 and try and buy a drink in many states, you'd be arrested and get, you'd be thrown out. Uh, you know, if you were to, in fact, if you were to go to the United States and cross a road without crossing at, a, at the right point, you would, you would be arrested. The point is that the foreign secretary's I suppose uh, intention was correct, but his phrasing was shoddy. OK, so Peter, on that point then, were some Qatari ambassador to come over here and, you know, attempt to tell us that actually we're far too liberal a society and attempt to, you know, hector all of us on our treatment of goodness only knows what, I'm assuming, Peter, that you're, you would give very short shrift to that argument and tell the Qatari ambassador to sling his hook. No, I wouldn't. I would defend the right of the Qatari ambassador to say whatever he wants. This is a free country. We believe in free speech. 
So we are, have, a, have a very different set of standards and values to Qatar, and we apply them here as we would have them applied anywhere. But the other thing I want to say about James cleverly is in his statement, what was truly shocking is he was suggesting in particular that LGBT plus fans should compromise their sexuality to appease the dictatorship. But he never sent a single word in that statement criticizing Qatar's gross abuse of LGBT plus people or women or migrant workers. So he yeah. was like really, whether by intent or default or just sheer clumsiness, he was actually doing PR for the Qatari regime. So David, on that point then, looking at what the Foreign Secretary actually said and looking at what the England LGBT Group 3 Lions Pride have actually responded to his comments saying it's an extremely unhelpful intervention, do you think the Foreign Secretary has a duty to actually be a proponent of the West's values abroad? Uh, yes, to a point. The Foreign Secretary's job uh, does entail, of course, extolling British values. But it's not really extremely helpful to, to, to foment or to concoct uh, any sort of rivalry, any sort of fight with a country like Qatar, which is by and large an ally of ours, uh, and much more so than many other Middle Eastern uh, states, Middle Eastern Islamic states, it should be said. Uh, so I think it's perfectly reasonable for the Foreign Secretary to say what he said. I don't think it's outrageous to suggest that LGBT plus people going to Qatar should perhaps hold themselves back a bit from expressing that in the way that they would feel able to do here. It is perhaps a matter of safety that if they go there, uh, and is, as is their right to express themselves, they must be prepared for the fact that there are going to be consequences. And for the Foreign Secretary to warn people of these consequences and advise them as he has, that perhaps it would be in their own best interest not to act in the way that they would feel free to act here, um, I think is entirely congruent with the role that he possesses. So David, are you saying, well, Peter, you know, you made your bed lie in it? No, I wouldn't say anything so crass or silly. I would say that Peter has a right to go to Qatar and express himself and he ha as he has. I think he's exceptionally brave to do it. His courage uh, over many, many decades in, uh, in, in, in carrying out protests of this sort is laudable. But I'm sure that Mr. Tatchell knows uh, better than anyone on this channel what the consequences are going to be. And I think it's reasonable that the Foreign Secretary should, should say, should have said, that there are dangers to this. That if you go to a country, and a deeply Islamic country like Qatar, which has repressive laws against homosexuality, as it does against the use of alcohol, for instance, then there are going to be consequences for flouting those laws. Exactly. Well, hey, I'll tell you can, what, can, can I on say that, that note. Yes, Peter, very, very briefly. Uh, just going to say that I was prepared to pay the consequences. Indeed. I feel so strongly and feel it's so important to support those many brave Qatari people who want democracy and human rights. It's so important to show solidarity with them that I was prepared to go to prison if necessary. Of course, I didn't want to, but I was prepared to. I was prepared to accept the penalty. OK, well, I tell you what, the lack of alcohol is enough to put me off going full stop anyway. So we'll leave it there, folks. That was Peter Tatchell, the activist and campaigner, and David Aldroyd Bolt, the political commentator. I thank you both very much for your thoughts. There's plenty more to come this 